Welcome into the Lounge Podcast presented by DraftKings. We are fired up today to have Arthur Millette, who just signed a new two-year contract upstairs. How are you feeling right now? Blessed, man. Grateful for the opportunity to be back from Baltimore for two years. Um, like I was telling you guys earlier before we got on air, man, just feel like it's unfinished business to handle. And and as you went through this free agency process, uh, you were just telling us you were you were training here in Baltimore this off season. So did you kind of feel all along like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up back here in Baltimore. This is where I want to be. This is where it's gonna end up. Yeah, man. I mean, I think for me, I felt like I was a raven my whole career. You know, um, I just finally landed in the right spot. Um, so like, uh, I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to go anywhere else. Um, I had the best year of my career here. Um, so whatever, you know, we had with negotiations to work it out, I was I was, you know, I was going to take less or whatever it was to be here. Like, I love this team. I love my teammates. I love the coaches. It's the most fun I ever had on the team. So, you know, man, um, I could be myself here. Um, you know, I'm just forever grateful to just to have another opportunity for the next two years to play with these guys around me, the coaching staff, you know, um, you know, man, they just make things so much easier for me, you know, playing a tough game. So I just appreciate you so much. Can you talk about your journey a little bit this year? I know early on you had an injury. It was kind of bothering you, like <laughs> how disappointed you were yeah. with that, but you overcame. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, man, just ham in, hamstring injuries, you know, dealing with just – tedious injuries you know obviously it was it was aggravating you know it was a, it was a tough journey mentally just because I had just left a rivalry team right you know I just wanted to prove to you guys that you know I was worth what you guys were giving me you know like you guys gave me some type of um security here you know I was coming from uh uh Pittsburgh and you know they didn't really give me anything guaranteed on my second year contract but when I signed with Baltimore you guys did and I just felt like that was just the ultimate respect because you know I put blood sweat and tears in with with Pittsburgh and you know I played her and did all these things and they still didn't want to give me a guarantee but you know you guys turned on the film the this past year you know um before y'all signed me and y'all still gave me some guarantee and I didn't play for you guys so you know my gratitude was just to show you guys that you know I'm grateful and that I've been working my butt off and that I can you know help this team win and that was the biggest thing for me that I wanted to do that's why I was so frustrating with the injuries you know so you know not when obviously when they when it cleared up and I was able to play I showed a little bit of my worth so absolutely I, I'm curious like it's interesting to hear you say like the, you felt like you were raving your whole career most fun you ever had playing football I'm just curious why like what was it about this team this organization your teammates that made you feel that way man I Honestly, I, I ask I, I ask myself that question all the time. I just think this is just the building, man. I just think everybody in this building speaks the same language. You know, um, we all work hard. We all care for each other. It's a brotherhood. We are, we're comfortable with having difficult conversations if we need to. Um, we don't hold anything or grudges against each other. Um, we can motivate each other by making the plays that we do make. We're not jealous of other guys making plays. We're happy for them. We're celebrating with them, you know. So I just think just all of it, just the camaraderie, just the whole building. Like like I said, we speak the same language and, you know, we kind of operate the same way. I was I was messing with a couple of guys. Like I saw the I saw the cooks working out. I'm like, everybody working out here, bro. So I was just like, you know, we all speak the same language, man. You know, we all we all have that once common go and you know at the end of the day that was to reach the Lombardi and I think you know we're trying to run it back and you know finish unfinished business. I know some people you know there's been a lot of change obviously with the Ravens free agency that's what it's about. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a different team. Just mm -hmm. curious from someone who's in the trenches mm -hmm. with these aspirations of going to the Super Bowl what you guys, what you think about the Ravens defense next year and building off what happened with a new defensive coordinator and new players, how that's going to come together? I mean, like I said, man, I think we're going to be fine. Um, I think we're going to be more than fine. We have the experience. We all, it's not a lot of guys leaving like that. We got a couple of edge guys and, you know, a couple of DBs that have left, but, you know, for the most part, the core is still there. And, you know, honestly, I think that the sky's the limit. You know, we're going to hold each other accountable. And like I said, we all speak the same language for me. And that was just the biggest thing. And that's the biggest thing on successful teams. When everybody has the same understanding and the same mindset and the same goals, you can be successful. So I think we're going to be successful this year as well. It's interesting, like, go, just kind of playing off Cliff's question there, like, this defense last year was historically good. Historically good. And and kinda, and it was... First year, right? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, you know, but there there has been change. And I think that fans worry, okay, you lose your defensive coordinator. There's right. going to be a new defensive coordinator and whatever. You, certain guys leave. But 
the, I get the sense in talking with coaches and talking with players like yourself that you guys feel as a defense like, no, we're still going to be yeah, that defense. For sure. It, th- that confidence is there. Why? I mean, you know, man, we we played in tough games last year. You know what I'm saying? And obviously our defensive backs and a couple of our guys are fairly young. So it's not like they didn't get any playing time and we're like, oh, is it kind of iffy on what's going to happen? Like, everybody's ready, bro. You know, um, we have sour taste in our mouth from last year. So it's like we're holding each other accountable. We're texting each other in group chats saying, well, are you working out? What are you doing? Mm. Are we going to have defensive back trip? Are we going to work out together? Are we going to get things done? So I just felt like, you know, we're all reaching out with each other. We're all, you know, a one big family. So, you know, it, when you're one big family, you can hold each other accountable in tough situations. So we're fine. Mm. Oh, you strike me as a guy who's like very driven. Like even when you play well, if somebody gives you a comment, you play great. Oh, I can do better. You know, like no, nah, I mean, <laughs> if you're not getting better, bro, then what's what's the point of doing it, right? Just in just in real life as well. Like you know, if you're not trying to get better every day in real life, you know what I'm saying? Then what's the point of living, right? So I think for me, just with my craft, man, if I'm not getting better every year, or getting better every, really every week, then I don't need to be doing this, you know. And I just try to hold myself accountable to that because of the training that I do in the off season. If I'm, if I'm training four or five times a, a week, two, three times a day, then I should be getting better every week. I should be getting better by week by week in the, in the NFL as well, you know, while we're playing these guys. So where do you think that drive comes from? I mean, does it come from? Uh, I, I just know. think it's my upbringing. Mm-hmm. I'm the oldest of five. You mm-hmm. know, I had to take care of my brothers and sisters. Um, Juco guy. You know, um, University of Memphis, <laughs> undrafted, <laughs> ran a four six in the combine. So you know, I had to work and prove myself every day, and it's it just came a normal life to me, and I appreciate it because uh, I see a lot of people that you know um, take the grind for granted. But you know, I'm a true testament of grind, man. You know, um, you know, just keep your head down and keep working, and you never know what you can get, and you know. Yeah, for, for viewers and listeners who, who aren't totally familiar with with your story, your path to getting to this point was was incredible. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it was pretty crazy. It man. is. He grew up in New Orleans, yeah. and and your family home was destroyed by Katrina, mm-hmm. and I mean, you were literally you had to get in a helicopter. You were helicopter out. Yeah, I mean, Pat, uh, Superdome. Moved to uh, Michigan. Uh, this church funded us a crib in Ann Arbor, and I thank them till this day mm. because honestly, I saw the blessing of disguise. Now I see the blessing of Katrina. You know, I think if I was still in New Orleans, I wouldn't have been playing football. I think if when Katrina happened, I moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was literally like, I would say, not even a mile from the big house, the University of Michigan, and I went to a game, and I was like, yo, this is amazing. I don't know who they were playing at the time, but yeah. I just, it opened my eyes. I'm like, yo, I want to play football. So you weren't even a football player before then? I didn't play football. I only played one year of high school ball, my junior year. <laughs> didn't play my senior year. I had to, <laughs> I had to walk on to junior college. I, long story, man. I had to walk on to JUCO, you know, find my way there. And I think that's what kind of got me prepared for the NFL. People don't really understand. When you go to junior college and you're out of stater, I went to a Mississippi junior college. So when you're out of stater in Mississippi junior college, you only get four spots on each side for out of staters. Mm-hmm. And it's a 55 man roster. So you're fighting for your position, just like the NFL. And I just think God had a silver line and a blessing just showing me like, yo, this is this is going to be your career if you really work hard at it. Wow. And he gave me the blueprint for it my first year trying to play football in junior college. 55-man roster, compete for your spot. You only get eight You only get eight spots. And you really only get four because I'm on defense. Mm-hmm. I'm not playing both sides. Yeah. So you get four spots, bro. You have to beat all these guys out. How mentally tough can you be? Can you be locked in the whole time? Can you be, you know, mentally ready for the situation? And, you know, I was prepared. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now, you seem like you're playing your best football now, and not every player's career arc goes like that. Why do you think you've been able to, every year, continue yeah. seeming like you're building, getting better? Um, I just think, honestly, bro, for me, like, I'm 30, right? 
I'm an older guy in the league. So for me, like, I have to work out every day. My job is year-round. Football is year-round for me. Um, these guys are coming in running four two twos, four, you know what I'm saying? Big guys running four fours. So, like, for me, like, it's more mental film study breakdown. It's more me working out every day, just figuring out, okay, I don't have to break as hard here. I don't have to move as, as fast here because if I'm in a cover two or cover three job, I can kind of save my energy or bait someone or et cetera, et cetera. Just learning the ins and outs of the game, um, you know, having great coaches as well, man, in film study. Well, what is the next like progression to Cliff's point? You've you've gotten better every year, mm-hmm. and I think I think that you'll be better, even better in your second year with I the Ravens. Yeah, I will. What does that look like? Um, for me, like uh, this past off season, uh, I didn't go anywhere. I stayed here. Um, like I was telling you guys, I stayed here for like a week and a half, almost two weeks, and me and my mentor, we went through every game. We went through every game, all the bad plays, all the good plays, all good, bad, and ugly. Went through every game. We sat down and we looked at some things that I need to work on. And and I think that's why I get better every year. I'm my biggest critic, you know what I'm saying? And he is as well. And by the time I'm coming into training camp already, you're not telling me what I have to fix. I already didn't kind of target it and fixed it already to kind of improve my play for next year. And I think that's what kind of helps me out throughout my years. Like I look at my whole, all my film, I see where I messed up at and I target that in my training every day. So I can, it could be second nature. So when a, when a team says, oh yeah, he can't flip his hips and does that. Oh yeah, I already started on film. I know y'all targeting that. I didn't worked on that the whole off season. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's the biggest thing with me. Like the last play of the of the playoffs, I was an outside leverage. I felt like I should have undercut that play and try to just, you know, play the hands more. So guess what I do this offseason? I work on all undercutting things, playing two man under so I can play the hands and get the ball out next time. You know what I'm saying? So just little things like that, man, just kind of just perfecting my craft. You you mentioned from the very top of the conversation, sour taste in our mouths. Yeah. Like that seems to be, of course, I think – you know, anyone can understand that the team was kind of on the door. It was on the doorstep of, of getting to a Super Bowl. How does that sour taste in your mouth drive everything that you do to try to get back to that point? Just work, bro. It's not just work, man. <laughs> I mean, I said, man, it's nothing. I tell a lot of guys, you know, being in a position where I'm at right now, like it's all was just hard work, bro. It wasn't me planning anything else and figuring out what I wanted to do. It was just working, you know, being my big, big, being the biggest credit. We have to be our biggest credit. We got to work like that's it. If you work hard and do everything else, like everything else is going to take care of itself. So I think we'll be fine. It was a heck of a year, not only just for you, but the entire secondary. Entire, yeah. I mean, keep like talking. In and out, right. different players, right? Right, you know? right. So, I mean, I just think it was, like I said, bro, like accountability. Everybody works hard. A lot of people don't know, like, Dar, me and Dar were working out after with each other a lot of times. We were lifting with each other a lot of times, pushing each other and Rocky and you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. I just think, like I said, it's just hard work, bro, and, a, and accountability, and I think we'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think the potential of this secondary? You got, you know, Kyle Hamilton, all pro his second year. <laughs> Marcus wasn't even healthy the whole year. Beast. Brandon, the way, the way he's playing. <laughs> I mean, when you guys get together, you know, this spring, summer, yeah. what are you having another year together? Yeah, it's gonna, I think our confidence is going to be through the roof, bro. And I, that's what I'm excited about. Uh, me and Marcus came in together in 2017. Uh, in New Orleans, we played together and stuff. So I already have familiarity with him. And, you know, me and Kyle rotating at the nickel, you know, we we're we're like, you know, we're we're close now. You know, um, we 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 learn from each other. I learn from him. He learns from me. We pick each other brains. Be Steve on the outside with Marlo, man. I just I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be really good. Yeah. And I and I think, too, like we're going to hold each other accountable to a whole another standard this year. Just because we know what we're capable of. Yeah, it's you. I remember your, one of your first press conferences here. You talked about being the nickel. Yeah, and you're like, I'm a nickel. Yeah, like I'm a nickel, bro. <laughs> I know. It's like I know what I bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? I know what I work on. Um, it's not a lot of guys that's gonna be able to stick their nose in in in, in different spots like me, blitz time like me. Um, you know, it's a tough spot to play inside. A lot of DBs yeah. don't want to get in there. They don't, they don't want to get in that in that water right there. It's, you because you're swimming with the sharks. You got Roquan right there next to you. You got D lineman right in front of you, and then you still might have to guard that number one receiver. So, you know, man, like. 
playing nickel, you have to really be comfortable inside there. So that's why I was like, I'm a nickel. I don't want to go outside. I don't go anywhere else. Nickel, let's keep me there. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was a it was a fascinating like yeah. mindset, and it yeah. kind of just gave it an, an insight into how you operate. Because like your point is right, like nickel. Like you're in the you're in the mess. In the mess. <laughs> and then you have to switch your mindset right now to go back to DB if you need to. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people understand. You could be covering a tight end one time, right? Then you could be covering in a speedy speedy slot, mm -hmm. and then they might switch to their number one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And all of this, you might have to figure out what leverage you need to play so you can help yourself, but also be able to help the run as well, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's a chess game in there. And that's why I say I only play nickel because that's the chess game. You know what I'm saying? Outside's a little different. Like, it's bigger guys. I'm a shorter guy. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, outside. So you're going to need a six-foot corner. Mm -hmm. Inside, I got help so I can funnel a 6'2", six, 6'3", six, guy into to my safety, to my linebacker, mm -hmm. and play to a certain leverage and help myself. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the last one for me, Arthur, is when you think about like your journey of getting to this point, we, we talked about it a little bit, New Orleans to Michigan, Juco, Memphis, like you've been a lot of multiple teams in the NFL when like you signed a, a two year contract today and you have a team that like wants you here, right. like wants to invest in you and says like, you're a guy that we want around. Do you think about all that? Do you think about the journey? Like, is that part of like the, the excitement, the emotion of a day like today? I was on a plane uh, on my way here, obviously this morning. And I was thinking about it, man. And, you know, I'm just forever grateful because, you know, a lot of people would have gave up, you know, um, with the circumstances that I've, I was, I was dealt. Right. And I just think honestly, you know, for me, like, I just never like kind of like questioned God's will that he had for me. I never always had faith. And I think that's why I was always like blessed. You know what I'm saying? I never like asked why he put me in this situation or why I, this happened or asked him for a different stipend or asked him for anything that's going to just make me better. You know what I'm saying? I never questioned his will or what he put me through. So I was like, I just felt like, you know, I, I was just blessed just to be where I'm at, man. And I'm blessed now. And I'm just, like I said, I'm grateful for the opportunity I'm always forever humbled, but I'm always hungry and want for more, you know. So I'm blessed. I'm happy, but I'm ready to get to work and prove to you guys that, you know, it wasn't a waste of investment because, you know, that's the biggest thing with me. Wherever I sign my name on, I want it to be well worth, you know, business for me and, and whoever else it is. So, you know, I'm forever grateful, man. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm ready to get to work. More motivation for me to get more work harder. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm just ready to go, man. It's awesome. Well, we can't wait, man. Keep balling out. Congratulations yes, on the new deal and looking forward to see you play this fall. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Appreciate it. This is the Lounge Podcast. We're coming to you from the SeatGeek studio. We also want to mention our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. They are an official sports betting partner of the Ravens, and they've got an offer running right now that you don't want to miss. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use the promo code FLOCK if you're a new user. You can get a deposit bonus up to $1,000. Again, the promo code is FLOCK only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You need to be 21 years or older to play and physically present in Maryland. For help, visit mdgamblinghelp.org or call 1-800-GAMBLER. So uh, really enjoy the conversation with Arthur Millette. Definitely. You know, um, he obviously last year was his first season here. So not necessarily a guy that I think Ravens fans know a ton about mm -hmm. his story as we talked about is is really fascinating and he's overcome a lot to get to this point and i think that you know the conversation with him kind of shows his mindset he's serious he's hardworking. he's focused i think that this is a really nice deal yeah arthur's an intent guy and uh, he really fit in well i think with the whole ravens defensive persona uh, tough physical had something to prove came here with an edge and he really played well at that nickel spot uh, the Ravens wanted him back. I'm glad that he is back. And he's he's thrilled to be here. I think it's just another it speaks to how the Ravens culture, I think, played into this. The author's been three or four places, love playing in Baltimore the most. It was his best experience he ever had. He wanted to come back. And, yeah, I mean, even at, at 30 years old, I think his best football is actually in front of him. So I think it's a key kind of under-the-radar pickup for the Ravens to bring a player like that back to their secondary. Yeah, I mean, talk about a late bloomer. This is a guy, as he mentioned, played one-year high school football. And, 
you know, we also have a, a story on our, our website and our app that details, you know, his journey. If you want to read that in more detail, it's just really well done that, that outlines, you know, a lot that he had to overcome and, and, and gives you more detail on that, on that journey to this point. But this is a guy that had to go to JUCO and, you know, it was, it's been up and down for him, like his entire life. Um, and he's had a lot of adversity that he's had to overcome. And so, you know, I, I know a lot of times Raven, the Ravens talk about that in the draft process. Like they like guys, they like guys that have compelling stories who've had to overcome things and they, they really care. Like, I think that that stuff matters to a certain extent. And I even think that like for a player who's a veteran, like Mollett, when you look at him, like he's not going to be thrust into a big situation, you know, and be scared. He's overcome so much already just to get to that point. You know, I, he made, he came up with the big play at the end of the game against the chargers, you know, on right. Sunday night football. And, you know, I think that like, that's the type of, he was in a big moment at that time and came up with a with big play, you know, when the Ravens needed it at that time. And I, I think that he can do that. I do think from a football standpoint, it's a move that makes a lot of sense. You have your two outside corners and Marlon Humphrey and Brandon Stevens. Now you got your nickel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you have your top three and you're, and you're set there. I think the Ravens will continue to add. And they'll also see what they have in young players like Pepe and Jalen Armour Davis. But I think that like this puts you in a position where you're, you're, you're really set with your top three corners. Yeah, well, you know, the cliche, you can never have enough corners. You can never have too many, true. And uh, when you add someone like Millett, bring him back, who is versatile but loves to play that nickel. Like he said in the interview, I'm a nickel. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, like some defensive bags, they want to, oh, I'll do it all. It doesn't yep. matter to me. He wants that smoke inside, and it fits his personality because he's tough against the run. Uh, he can do a lot of things, so whatever receiver the, the opponent puts in the slot – He's not afraid to match up. So he's a football player. He's not just a cover guy. He's a guy who doesn't mind mixing it up, likes to put his stamp on guys when he makes the tackle. And yet, last year, the Ravens had a lot of, I thought, growing players. We saw Kyle Hamilton blossom, you know, become all pro in his second year. We saw Brandon Stevens have his best year as a corner. We saw Arthur Millette, who I think he had his best season. It was their first year together. We bring all them back. If that back end can stay healthy, along with Marlon, who had a lot of injuries last year, they could really, again, have one of the best secondaries in the league, which could lead to them, again, having one of the best defenses in the league. Yeah, I thought his point, too, about accountability was interesting, that, that they're talking, they're, they're talking about training. They're, they're, that conversation is happening right now from, a, from an accountability standpoint. And I think that that speaks to just what this team – thinks they can do you know the, the bad taste in their mouth the confidence about how good the group can be overall the defense can be I think all of that plays into it you know so it's been a, it's kind of been a busy week here in Baltimore Arthur Millett gets a two-year deal done here on this day Arthur Millett signed Chris Board mm -hmm. veteran linebacker special teamer signs uh, as well as Josh Jones veteran offensive lineman so in terms of, of board I think that you know that gives you a good pro quality proven Special teams ace sure. can do what Delshawn Phillips did last year from a special team standpoint and play that at a very high level. Also can step in on defense if needed. You know, I think if the Ravens need him to play a defensive role, he can certainly do that. And then with Jones on the offensive line front, this is the first addition in this rebuild process. And, you know, he's a quality veteran player with a lot of starting experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just never with Jones, you never know how things can play out. He's played all four of or all four of the five offensive line positions. The only thing he hasn't been is center. He's played right tackle. He's played left tackle. He's played both guard spots. So he has that versatility. The Ravens like an offensive lineman, and you know, kind of like a John Simpson last year when yeah. the Ravens signed him. Nobody was making a big deal about it. it wasn't all over Twitter, you know, or, or X, or you know. But <laughs> when the season started, he's a starting left guard. Now I'm not saying it's going to work out that for Jones, but He's a guy who has experience. He's played multiple positions, and you never know about injuries. So, as you mentioned, it's just a piece of the puzzle. I think that the Ravens, it wouldn't surprise me if they drafted two offensive linemen in this draft, and also wouldn't surprise me if they signed maybe another veteran offensive lineman. But he's a guy who can fill in a lot of spots, yeah. who has experience, who could end up being more important than you think he is as we're talking in March. Yeah, here's what I like about the move. The versatility is, is very high on that list, as well as the starting experience. Started 24 games over the last three years. So he's he's played a lot of football. 
he can step in and be a backup at basically four positions if he's not a starter. And I think the John Simpson comparison is a really good one. Like, it's too early to tell how it plays out for him. You know, he just signed today. But, like, if he... It happened with John Simpson. He he stepped in, and nobody necessarily really thought a year ago that he was certainly not a surefire starter at left guard. I don't even know if he was the favorite at this time a year ago. Probably Ends up not. Probably not. Ends up getting that job, starts every game, and then gets a nice contract in free agency. Could the same thing happen here? Potentially. Former third-round pick for Jones. He's played two different teams. So I think that there's a lot of talent. He's got good size. You know, and even, like, just having another – tackle who could step in from a depth standpoint I think is good um it, it also frees things up you know you could have McCarry then right. play left guard potentially right. you know McCarry is a jack of all trades you can play all five spots along the line so he could play guard there if you want him to or right guard right tackle so I I, I just like the move and like they'll see how it looks they're gonna all these guys are competing Jones is now going to be competing with McCarry and Ben Cleveland and Lele at right tackle and um you know, Andrew Voorhees and Salah at left guard. So, like, there's going to be a lot of competition there. It's it's wide open. And make no mistake, like, the, the Ravens aren't saying, okay, we got our guy, we're done on the offensive line. They're going to they're gonna address offensive line in the draft. They're going to draft one, two, multiple offensive linemen, I would think. And they can still add in free agency. Like, they're still going to add to that spot. But I, I just really think that it's a good move. Quality signing, right player, right price. Got a lot of experience. I think it it's a, a smart move for the team on a variety of levels. Yeah, and it's interesting because they've lost three of the five starters from a team that almost went to the Super Bowl on the offensive line. So it is a big deal, but the Ravens aren't running from the challenge. You know, they they embrace, I think, competition all the time. They're not afraid to play the best player. However it plays out, that's who, how it's going to play out. So the competition – during, you know, the offseason training, when we get the training camp the offensive line, it's going to be serious because all these guys, other than Tyler Linderbaum, know that, hey, we have something to prove and nothing's guaranteed for us. And the offensive line, you want, obviously, it to be a five-man unit that gels. So it's really going to be interesting to see guys rising and falling during practices, during preseason games, and then how they finally settle on that starting five. And maybe at the beginning of the season, it might be they may, you know, alternate spots, you know, more serious. They've done, they did that last year at the tackle spots when Stanley mm-hmm. and Morgan Moses weren't healthy. But sooner or later, I know that they want to have their starting five up front. And all so many guys this year are going to have a chance to be that guy. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah. So last thing is the uh, owners meetings, NFL owners meetings are next week. You're going to be there covering it. Uh, the big note is uh, Monday morning, wake up early. The, the AFC coaches breakfast, head coach John Harbaugh is going to meet with reporters. You know, it goes on for about an hour um, on Monday. Uh, that's at 7.45 a.m. So you can listen to Coach Harbaugh and have your coffee. You'll be there asking the hard-hitting questions. What, what do you expect out of owners meetings next week? Well, I like the atmosphere there because, you know, everybody's undefeated now. And coaches are really a lot looser to me in that atmosphere than they are you just like the, the Florida starts. atmosphere. It is, right. Exactly. You like that. That's what yes, you Yes, I say. do. <laughs> no question. And so, yeah, with, with me being a galoose and they're in a good mood, yeah. it leads to a lot of interesting conversations. And, you know, I kind of – I can't get away from thinking last year – the owners' meetings, you know, how – what a different scenario it was. You know, Lamar hadn't signed and things were going on. And Well, that was – the owners' meetings, that was the tweet about the trade. Yeah, the, it the was – press conference, you that know. That was, was intense for yeah. owners' meetings. Yeah. Now, you know, Lamar's under contract and Raven just got off a great season. And I think it just shows you how quickly this business changes. And, you know, John Harbaugh, again, has been here for so long. No matter what changes go on – to me, the way he leads and deals with everything, it's one of the keys to the Ravens' success. So you'll see him, a guy who now is almost the longest tenure coach in the NFL, and then you'll see the new coaches there going into their first year. It's a really interesting atmosphere. So we'll see about that. We'll be some rule, rule changes, as always. You know, We'll see about you know if there's any rule changes that come out of the competition committee. But, yeah, it's, it's always a fun trip for me because, again, in that setting – before the 
bullets start flying during the regular season, coaches tend to be a lot more loose than they are once the season starts. Yeah, so we'll be there. Uh, Cliff will be there on Monday, and we will have a, a reaction podcast to everything that's said during that coach's breakfast on Monday morning, so stay tuned for that next week. Thank you, as always, for listening to the Lounge Podcast or watching it on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Also, head over to the Ravens Press Pass podcast feed. We'll post that full Harbaugh Monday coach's breakfast uh, video or audio there as well, so you can listen to that in its entirety. So uh, subscribe here to the Lounge Feed and to the Ravens Press Pass podcast feed as well. Thank you so much for checking us out, and we'll be back with you next week. Mm-hmm.